Hello and welcome to Die Still Dawn. And again, sorry for again long breaks. I've been again doing a lot of schoolwork, but tomorrow are my last exams, and I will have some uh, summer vacation before my Christmas, summer work begins. So I might be able to do more videos in the coming weeks. I hope. Uh, anyway, thank you for first of all, thank you for hundred subscribers. Uh, Big thanks to you all, hope you like it and please give me feedback so I can make things better and uh, edit things better, all these things and give me suggestions or more videos to do. Uh, I think I'm doing a top uh, solo game list uh, this year again, uh, probably a top 30 or so uh, or something like that and also I will do my top 50 or so in the end of the year. Sorry, and uh, then I have many other top 10 lists planned and also many games to review and maybe even play through. Uh, but today I thought, I thought I'd like to talk about a pretty new game for me, but not a new game uh, per se, and that is Hive. Uh, this was, I think, released in 2001, so it's 15 years old, and I just only got my copy a few weeks ago, and I really enjoyed it and uh, first of all it's a two player only game uh, which comes in this box but you, in the box you also have the cool back and here the big pieces inside and it's very easy to travel with the pieces are here and you can just take it with you anywhere and play it on the plane or wherever you are traveling on the beach wherever uh, so uh, very travel uh, travel capable game and let's see how it plays first and then come back for my final thoughts. Bye. Okay, so here are all the pieces of that come with Hive. These very high quality, sturdy and heavy pieces uh, which look awesome on the table. You have white and black pieces and they are identical and 11 for each. And the game also comes with this cool bag. You can actually take the game with you easily. Just put it in this bag and it's easy to travel. So, uh, each player has four different pieces plus the queen. And I will now explain the basics and I might forget some rules, but this isn't meant to actually teach you the game totally. But the, each player has three ants, worker ants, which are very powerful, and three crash hoppers, two spiders, and two beetle bugs, and also their queen. And the objective of the game is to surround your opponent's queen bee. And you do this by moving these pieces around the table uh, and the game board that is formed with these pieces once the game starts rolling. And during your turn you have two choices. You either put a piece on the board or you move a piece. And you can't move a piece unless the queen, your queen is on the table already. And you have to place your queen not later than as your fourth piece. So either as the first, second, third or fourth piece. And from that on you can then start moving your pieces also. So let's play a few sample turns just in as an example and I won't be <laughs> playing this like strategically or anything but let's say the uh, white player starts with a spider so now the opponent might start with let's say a beetle and this is the only point in the game that you can actually put your piece next to another color and after this it is, it is impossible so uh, as the white player's next move they could actually couldn't put the spider here because it is touching the black piece. So the possible piece, uh, sorry, places are this, this, and this. But I think they might go so on something with something like this. And then uh, it's on to the black player. And let's say they want to start here with the spider. And now the white player thinks that maybe I want to put the queen actually out and puts it there. And uh, starting next turn, the white can actually move the pieces also. Okay, so black senses the danger, so he will actually just put the 
worker ant here. So now the white one has a choice. He can actually move a piece or put more on the board. Uh, but since there's not so immediate danger, I think he will actually just put a worker ant out also. And this is by no means a good example of a good play. I just want these pieces out to show you the different movement patterns. And now as the fourth piece, the black one must place the queen and let's say he would sit here. Okay, so now the white one actually wants to start moving the pieces. And let's start with the crash hopper actually. And the crash hopper can move a straight line or hop over a straight line of pieces. So for example, it could actually move from here, hopping over this line to here. And that's one possible move. Other possible moves are actually hopping over this piece to this place or from this place to this place. Those are all the legal moves. It can't hop over a, an empty space. So let's say, for example, there was this kind of uh, situation here. Uh, the crash hopper wouldn't be able to jump here because there's a gap there. It also wouldn't be able to move here either. It has to hop over at least one piece. And then the main rule of the game is that you can never like separate the hive into two pieces with your move. So let's say for example this spider would, couldn't move here because it would make two pieces of the hive. Uh, all of these pieces are able to move and also the worker ant and the bee, his queen is also able to move. But let's say the white player moves the crash hopper here. Okay so now the white player, sorry the black player starts thinking about locking onto the white player's queen and moves his worker ant. A worker ant is, uh, has a special move that it can actually move to any place on the hive on the outside. So it could move to any place here and it decides to move here to start blocking the white queen. Okay so white player's turn and I I think he would actually like to do the same thing, so he will move his worker ant here, now locking the queen. Also, one main thing of moving is that you can uh, the a piece can only move if it can slide out of its position. So, for example, this guy can move, but let's say there was maybe this kind of situation. Uh, well, this is a bad example. This is a better example. So uh, even though removing the grasshopper from here, jumping to here, wouldn't break the hive in two pieces, it can't move because it can't slide out of the slot here. So if you can't slide the piece out, it can't move. So let's say this wasn't here. Now the grasshopper can slide out of here and would, able to, would be able to jump there or there, for example. Okay, so. Uh, I have uh, the spider and the beetle bug left. And let's say a spider was here. A spider always moves exactly three spaces on the outside. So for example, one, two, and three. Or one, two, and three. Sorry, it's getting out of the picture here. Or then one, two, and three. So it's uh, kind of tricky to set it up perfectly but it can be very surprising, I guess. And then there's the beetle bug, which is very interesting. Uh, it only moves one space, but it can actually move on top of the hive. So it would, could, it would be able to move there and then maybe here. And when it's on top of another piece, the piece, piece underneath can't move and it turns to the color of the beetle. So, uh, for example, this white piece would now be considered black and the black would be able to place a crash hopper here, for example, because these pieces are now black. Uh, so this is a very powerful piece, but it's hard and slow to maneuver into position. But if you get it on top of your opponent's queen, he is in trouble. And it can also actually drop into like slots here, so for example, it would be able to drop into this slot here from the on top of the hive. 
and then there's only the queen bee left and the queen only moves one space it can't move on top it only moves one space either here or here for example and uh, once the player's b is queen b is totally surrounded that player loses the game and it can be from either color it's rare that it's only the other it's pretty rare for this to happen actually so usually there's one piece of your own color or maybe two depending on how fast the game goes but that's the game and I might have forgotten some rules and uh, keep in mind this was not a good example of a good way to play the game but just to exam exemplify the rules of the game hope you like Okay, so that was Hive. I uh, hope you got the main idea of how the game works uh, in that gameplay section and now for my final thoughts. Well, I really love this game. Uh, it's quickly become one of my favorite two-player games. I've played like about 20 games or so of it in a uh, few weeks only and uh, I'm always uh, looking for a chance to play it and always have it with me in, when I go to school or anything now and really want to try it. I really enjoy it and it's the perfect balance of chess and still light and easy to understand. Uh, I've always like enjoyed chess as a more of a principle that I like the idea of chess but I don't really like to play it and I've also always tried it but it's always too boring or too uh, like too drawn out or uh, demands too much calculations and stuff like that and it just takes long and also if the opponent has played it a lot the game is always <laughs> a sore bet for them so it's uh, kind of hard to get into. Uh, I'm not saying Hive isn't that either. Uh, if you played it 300 times and I played against you, you will beat me pretty much every game. Uh, but uh, it's still much easier to get the main things of the game right and start understanding the clever mechanics and clever strategies than it is in, for example, chess. And well, the best parts are it's quick. Uh, some games are only 5 minutes, 3-5 minutes and up to 15-20 minutes on the longer ones that draw out a little bit. And it's always tense and it's easy to tell where things are going at a glance. And the pieces are just magnificent. Uh, they are very heavy and sturdy and you can actually just throw them around and nothing will happen to them ever. And they are inviting looking, even though I don't particularly prefer bugs myself either, but uh, I don't mind them because they are nice and the movement patterns are kind of like make sense in a way. And uh, there's always some clever move you can actually pull off in the game and each game you learn more and more and more and want to try different strategies and different pieces and different starting positions and uh, all these things so there's almost infinite replayability in that sense I doubt I wouldn't be bored of this game for tens hundreds of games even and uh, even then finding new opponent it always makes the game like different because the new new opponent thinks in a different way so I highly recommend Hive as a brilliant two-player game it's if you always been like me that you like the idea of chess but don't really want to play it then please give your chance yourself a chance to try Hive because I think you will like it uh, but of course people who like uh, like simple no brain burner kind of games I think this might be a little bit too brain burnery for them and also it's weird because it is light but I wouldn't call it a light game it's easy to understand and easy to play and quick to play but still it's pretty medium heavy <laughs> heavy game I think so it's definitely not for everyone but there are many walkthroughs on the internet so check YouTube for more videos uh, if you want to see if you would like it and there are also some print and play versions I think on BGG so uh, it's 
Uh, but anyway, it's pretty cheap to buy and you can also get the pocket edition which is the same quality of uh, components but they are smaller so it's even easier to travel with and it also brings in the two expansions Ladybug and Mosquito with it which are new pieces. I haven't bought them yet but I think I will try to find them at some point. But yeah, that was Hive and highly recommended. Goodbye.